And the big thing was because I knew going in that they hadn't tested the bullets. And my theory was that the bullets themselves were the most important pieces of evidence in the case because they were found inside the gun, both, you know, obviously in the chamber and then 10 in the magazine. And the reason why they were the most important pieces of evidence is because they were impervious. Their location in the object was impervious to secondary transfer. So if my client's DNA was on the bullets, there's no way I could argue there was secondary transfer. That's right. And the technician that swabbed the gun also swabbed the bullets. And she then sent it to the lab and the lab technician, I swear in the report, like italics for everyone to see clearly, items seven through nine or whatever it was, they were on the list, were not tested. And so she made the conscious decision not to test the bullets. And I knew, you know, what she says and what they argue is that, like I said earlier, DNA evidence and DNA, you know, transfer in terms of contact DNA, whether it's primary or secondary, is more conducive on kind of rough surfaces because it's easier to get your skin cells on rough surfaces. And so their argument is, is that it, it kind of doesn't make sense to test the bullets because they're smooth. And so you're not as likely to get a DNA profile or develop a DNA profile from the bullets. But what happened is, and what was some really good evidence, the sheriff's technician that swabbed the gun also swabbed the bullets. And what she said, first off, is that she sorry, swabbed the bullets through the protocol that was developed by her office, the sheriff's office, in conjunction with the lab. Basically, at the direction of the lab, she swabbed these bullets. And not only did she say that she swabbed the bullets, but what she also did is she swabbed the areas of the bullets most likely to reveal DNA or, you know, basically recover DNA evidence. And she specifically said that there was a certain area of the bullets where there was kind of raised, I think it was like the initial, I think they're like Winchester ammunition. So it would have been the W for Winchester on the bullets. And that area is raised. So it's kind of like a rougher area of the bullet. And those are the areas that she swabbed, which most likely have contact DNA. And so I kind of set her up even before the analyst testified. I asked her those questions about where she tested, why she tested it. And like you said, you know, the policy and procedure, which in this case was developed by the very lab for whom the lab analyst that was later testifying saying, we, oh, you know, there's no need to test the bullets that they developed. And they basically told the sheriff's officer to swab the bullets, and, but then they didn't test it. And so that was kind of like how I approached it and how I handled the DNA evidence.